Namaskar, hello and very warm welcome to all the learners and viewers in this very special live phone in session of CIT and CRT named webinar. I am Renu Bhatt with you all and you are watching us live on e Vidya channels from channel number 6 to 12 and apart from all those channels you are with us on our YouTube channel as well that is NCERT official. And dear learner, today is Friday and we are here to discuss about the journey of our national ICT awardee teacher. So without any further delay, let us quickly meet her. You are Srimati Lata Ramchandran. You are primary teacher retired from Kendri Vidyale, CLRI campus Adyar Chinnai. Very warm welcome ma'am. And before uh, we begin this particular webinar, let me share some certain information to all the viewers and learners and teacher, teacher educators in case they have any query or they want to know more about her journey. You can reach out to us through our various mediums. You can call us, you can drop an email as well. You can call us on our telephone number that is double eight double zero double four zero double five nine. Either you can drop a mail at our email address that is training dot help desk at the rate CIT dot NIC dot IN and we would be more than happy if you share your experience or uh, your feedback as well. And apart from these mediums, you can go to the YouTube channel that is NCERT official. Then you have to go to the live chat box and then only you can drop your comment out there. And we are expecting your participation because we bring this particular webinar only for you. But before we begin this particular webinar, let me share a very important piece of information with you all regarding India's G20 presidency. We are indeed very proud that India assumed G20 presidency and will convene the G20 leaders summit for the first time in the country in 2023. A nation that deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism. India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of all. And in doing so, manifest the true spirit of Pasudhaya Kutumbukam or we can say the whole world is one family. With that very important piece of information, let's quickly get back to the webinar in which we are going to discuss about more about our experts journey. So Lata ma'am, over to you. We are very eagerly waiting for you to share your journey ma'am. How was it? What were the challenges and how you overcome that, ma'am? Thank you so much. Uh, I am Lata Ramachandran, a primary teacher retired from Kendri Vidyalaya CLRA campus, Ariar, Chennai, 20. Thanks to CIET for this opportunity to share my experience being a passionate teacher for 40 years in the field of education. Hmm. To speak about me, I was born and brought up in Tamil Nadu and I have learned everything in the medium of Tamil. My qualifications, I studied in a government school in Tamil medium up to plus two. Then I did my BSc chemistry, MSc chemistry, MA English and MA Psychology too. Also, I have done my diploma in guidance and counseling to support my students, those who are in need. My passion basically to serve the society. So, for that I was thinking I should become a doctor. But God blessed me to be a teacher. I was a teacher for 35 long years in Kendri Vidyala Sangatan and also 5 long years in the private school. I enjoyed being a facilitator and a learner most of the time. My journey as a facilitator. I completed my plus 2 in the year 1980. So immediately I wanted to become a doctor to enroll myself in MBBS. That was my passion to serve the society. But I was not able to. My next thought was how do I serve the society? The next option came to me was the teacher. So I completed my BSc chemistry on 26th May 1983. After completing that, I wanted to enroll in the BA. But when I went for enrolling myself to BA, they said, you should be first a teacher. With that certificate only, you can enroll yourself into a BA. So, I entered into a private school 
as a fresh teacher only because to do my BA. Without equipping myself, I will not be a successful teacher. So 1983 to 85, I worked in a private school and also completed my BA. Then I moved on to Chennai for my further qualifications. In 1985 to 88, I worked in a school named Vivekananda Vidyalaya in Ambatur, a school with a vision of man-making education. In this school, I learned the art of being pupil's teacher. We call Dr. APJ as people's president. I wanted to be at least a people teacher. So I learned the art of being that from that Vidyalaya. In 1988, I joined the Kendri Vidyalaya Sangatan and I was blessed to be a primary teacher in this prestigious organization. I am a self-motivated person, hardworking, very keen to explore things. I never compare myself with somebody. What I was yesterday, what I am today, what I want to become tomorrow, that was my aim all through my service in my life. Now when I entered into Kendra Vidyalaya Sangatan, first appointment of mine was in Hindustan Photo Films Uti in Tamil Nadu. 1988 to 1992, I worked there as a primary teacher. I was not well versed in Hindi, but Kendra Vidyalaya mainly in part Hindi. So I did a bargain with my students there. I will teach you Tamil. You have to teach me Hindi. That is how I became proficient in Hindi for further years. From there, in 1992, I moved to Chennai to a prestigious campus called Kendri Vidyalaya IIT Madras. That was from 1992 to 2016. I will definitely tell you that 25 long years of my service in this campus, I have learned a lot of things during my tenure. Here only, I bloomed myself into an ICT teacher. Then from there, in 2016, I got transferred to Kendriya Vidyalaya CLRI Chennai. That is another most approached branch of Kendriya Vidyalaya in the city. After my retirement, my passion even today continues. I am working as an educational advisor, doing translation of books, and also conducting seminars and workshops for the primary teachers in improving their pedagogies. Now, to tell you my strength, how I became a very successful teacher. As a primary teacher, you have to be having multiple personality, multi-talented person. My hobbies are reading, creative writing. I love music. I tuned the poems which were there in the textbook and taught the students. I also composed poems based on the concepts for primary classes and also taught them with action in the class. My creative work expanded into the area of uh, writing poems and also the drama scripts in Tamil where mass participation of my children went into Doordarshan as well as in All India Radio. I also was a fortunate participant in developing the content for classic social studies of Tamil Nadu government textbooks. My favorite pedagogies, digital mode, ICT, puppet shows, storytelling, and also concepts through the songs. The reason children love to be always in action, they are always bubbling with energy. So to meet out and keep them always engaged, the area which they love would be either the dance and song or it would be the games through which the concepts can be made to uh, understand by the children very well. Coming to the recognition of mine, 
I was blessed to get the National Teachers Award in the year 2007. I was fortunate to be with the, the People's President during the year 2013, where the Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangatan celebrated its Golden Jubilee celebration, and he was the chief guest for our Chennai region, where we had opportunity to interact with him. I feel more proud being with him than getting any kind of an award. My national ICT award was during the year 2012. Then I also blessed with KVS Innovation and Experimentation Award and the KVS National Incentive Award and also NCERT Innovation and Experimentation Award. Along with this, Rotary of Chennai also blessed me with an award for my outstanding service in the field of education. But I always remember every recognition is reminded me to be more responsible to continue my service to the humankind and not to be complacent. Now entering into the arena of ICT in search of a magic band, I would say. That is my encounter with the usage of computer. It is 27 long years. Chennai region, then I'm talking about 25, 30 years back, we had around 60 schools from Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Pondicherry, Andaman put together. The regional office, was next to the door of mine where I worked in the Kendriya Vidyalaya IIT Madras. Every year after the board exams are over, the results of all the 60 schools, both 10 and the 12, should be compiled and it has to be deliberated with the principals for the follow-up of action. So, when the 10th and the 12th results were coming, we have to do it each school-wise subject-wise, teacher-wise, performance-wise, student-wise, everything. Uh, I vaguely remember during that time, we never used the computer much. So what happens is, all these results from every school will come by the post. We have to open every cover, consolidate, find out which schools have not given, which schools have sent it and written. And then we have to do the drawing of lines uh, like an Excel sheet in the paper. We have to uh, collate all those details in that sheet, then it has to be typed in the computer, uh, typewriter and then we have to manually calculate uh, the percentage of uh, overall and individual schools. Everything has to happen manually. And you imagine for 60 schools this has to be done. So at most it will take one month or so. I volunteered, I wanted to learn how they are doing, so I volunteered for the job. And I sat with all those papers, it was like a marathon run, day and night, looking at only the numbers and hard copies, whether we have copied it rightly or we made a mistake or they made a mistake, all this will come. And at the back of my mind, always I was thinking, oh, what a hectic job this is. When I get a magic wand in my hand, that is how I encountered with MS Excel. So, using of MS Excel was my first encounter with the computer applications. I was totally self-taught. When I opened the Excel, I could see only the rows and the columns. I just started typing the school name. I just put the number what they have given today. And I didn't know how to save it. Sometimes I will press something, it will get saved. Sometimes the data will get uh, deleted. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it will not be stored at all. Sometimes I do not know where I have saved the file also. I will not be able to retrieve it. Sometimes I will click on the file but it will say it is corrupted. So all these challenges were there but finally I was able to succeed in my attempt of using this Excel sheet. So only data entry is not sufficient using the Excel. Now, after doing that, what should I do? I have to compile. I have to derive at the overall percentage. 
I have to find out which school is the topper, which school is uh, in the lower level. I have to sort out the descending order to be done, ascending order to be done, percentages have to be calculated. And in a particular range, how many schools are falling down? All these calculations have to happen. So again, explore. After exploration, I learned how to do the sorting, how to highlight the data, and how to calculate using the formulas which are there in the Excel. This is my first learning with uh, MS Excel, I should say. I should say thanks to my uh, Chennai region for giving this golden opportunity to enter into the arena of IC. Now, the data is compiled, the calculations have been done. Now, I have to present it to somebody. If I show a paper with complete numbers, we know normally people are not more interested with the numbers. How we derive that is, who is on the top, who is at the medium, who is at the bottom, all this have to be expressed in the form of any graphics. So, we again explore how this data can be converted into maybe a bar graph or a pie chart or any kind of a presentation where it will attract the attention of the people, those who are going to look at it. So, this was converted into graphs. Now, after making it into a graph, how do we present it? There came this PowerPoint presentation, very handy. Suppose I show only the numbers, will it not go above their head? So now what we did, we uh, copy and paste it, inserted the data, the graph, everything in the PowerPoint presentation. Now we have compiled it. What happens here? Maybe sometimes we have to use the table. Sometimes we may have to use graph. Sometimes we may have to use uh, an image. Something like that. So this embedding, how we have to embed the uh, images or the files or the tools like objects, that was also explored in one way or the other. So continuously after exploring all these things, uh, this presentation was made very interesting and the discussion was made very easier for the principal because once the data is compiled, the data is analyzed, we have the next step is the principals conference where the 60 principals will be attending the meeting uh, to deliberate upon what went right, what went wrong, how we have to proceed, what kind of an action plan. So when this presentation was presented there, it was uh, getting the attraction of all the people and it was well received by the people. Now the procedure is over, next we have to go for the documentation because whatever you hear, you may forget. Something has to be there in black and white for the follow-up. So, the complete proceeding, what we have done in the form of Excel and the PPT were compiled and the report was presented using the MS Word. Now, when you are doing it, it can be the minutes of the meeting or it can be the report of the three day or four days principles conference. During the program, they used to take clips, images. So we wanted to incorporate those uh, clippings or those images also into the report. So we were searching for one more tool, that was MS Publisher, where we were able to document everything in an attractive way and release the report of the principal's conference in a very, very attractive manner. So this was the basic uh, I should say, a motivation for me to explore the computer more and more. So once you get uh, the taste of it, I am very, very sure nobody will stop it. It will become an addict of using this. Now, when I expressed all these experiences with my friends, they said, how come only you are doing everything you are not sharing with us? Then we started working with our teacher group how I did what, all this was explained and uh, we discussed about how uh, better we can do it in the next time. When I was talking about this, one of my friend whose daughter is in Dubai, she used to communicate with her through the mail. So she said, why don't we explore the mail also? When she was talking to her daughter, she said, the same Excel, PPT, Word, whatever you are saying, all this can be used through the Google mail also. That becomes collaboration. 
So that was the spreadsheet, that was Google Slides, that was Google Doc, where we were able to share with our friends. And also the work of ours became very, very easy. Sometimes when we do normal mailing, we forget to attach the documents. So it delays the process. Whereas when you are using the Google, everything becomes at one click easier for you. So because of this Google exposure, our work of teaching, preparing the presentations, also doing the performance analysis, our question bank, our question paper preparation, everything became very handy and easy for us. Now, apart from this, I got a, an added opportunity, I should say, in the year of 2005. This would be, I will say, next stage of my learning about the usage of computers. In 2005, NCF, National Curriculum Framework, was introduced. Now, any organization, they have to empower all their teachers, the principals, uh, how to use this NCF into their real classroom situation. I was blessed to be one of the resource person for the orientation of principals and teachers in the NCF 2005. But at the end of it, our organization asked us to conduct an online test to find out how far the deliberation or the orientation was effective in making people understand. It was around 2000 plus teachers and uh, other offices. So now, to do this, what do we use? How do we go about? We know how to do it in Excel, PowerPoint, Word, uh, Google, something like that. But for doing for 2000 people at the stretch in the online, how are we going to do that? Immediately, with the support of the Computer Science Department of IIT Madras, we learned the art of how to create an online quiz or the assessment, how to load it in the intra server, how to conduct it online. When the questions are taken up by the participant, how the questions have to be jumbled so that the same question, same answer would not be copied by somebody else. This art, I learned it during the year 2005 thanks to IIT Madras Computer Science Department for uh, making me learn this uh, new tool or new aspect of uh, usage of computer. Then again in the same year, we had a master trainers course for the usage of new textbooks based on the NCF. Then also, again, I was one of the resource persons we conducted with the experience of conducting this NCF online quiz, we prepared one small online quiz for the teachers in our school server and we conducted the online test for new textbook usage. Then, when we were doing it, we also used how to use the sniffing tool, how to embed the files when we were doing our presentation. These are the two other arena where I got exposed to usage of intranet for uh, conducting online quizzes or online assignment. Now coming to the innovative pedagogies through the digital mode. All this I have learned. Now I thought I should not be the old teacher. I have to be an ICT teacher. What else new I can do it in my level. So what I wanted to do is, uh, I am not a very good artist, you know. I, I, I can only draw, but I am not very perfect in my uh, drawing. So what I did is, I used the free pick for the black and white pictures, and also the pictures which are free, which are having no copyright, uh, for including in my question papers, question bank, and in the PowerPoint presentation for the small kids. Then when it comes to the other things, like uh, mathematics, there are so many concepts, when you work out on the blackboard, the children may not understand well. But the same thing, when it is given in the form of animated quiz, in the online games, 
the same concept is understood by the children very well. So I used those concept based games and the quizzes for mathematics also. Being a primary teacher, we are supposed to handle both the languages, mathematics, EVS, and sometimes, yes, even art, SUPW, games, everything. So you have to be master of everything. Therefore, uh, I explored the next one is um, for my language classes. Uh, animated stories were there. So we have taken all those uh, animated stories for listening and speaking activities. And uh, some of my teachers prepared the puppet show that was recorded in the form of video that was also shared among uh, our parallel teachers to make uh, the pedagogy more interesting. Not only that, there were so many structural items in the textbook which were uh, converted into a form of a language online games that were also used for the effective transaction of content in the, the classrooms. And phonics app that was because all teachers Though they are degree holders, they may not be competent for teaching the phonic because it is not an easy job. So the phonic app was also used in the classrooms to strengthen the language foundation. I say the fluency of the language. Then we had certain things like craft. We have an SUPW period. How to do interesting craft work? We have used DIY, do it yourself, the video, small ones, which were shared with the students so that they look into it and make something very creative in the classroom where they own that they are the owners of that piece of craft work and they enjoyed learning also. And we have so many celebrations in the schools. We have to give cultural items like dances, uh, songs, maybe a uh, uh, a small a skit or drama, something like that. Wherever we ran short of things, we used the source of YouTube for collecting ideas and to improvise upon that for doing our things. And also, we have used so many podcasts, National Geographic Channel for EBS, and also British Council for effective transaction of English language. Now coming to the topic or the concept beyond imagination. This I feel a very, very essential part of a teaching profession where there are certain concepts which cannot be dealt very easily, understood very easily by the children. The reason is things have to be very concrete for the smaller kids. When something is very abstract, understanding becomes very difficult. There are few topics in the textbook like Sunita in space, home and abroad, valley of plants, up you go, Nandita in Mumbai, home and abroad, when the earth shook, so on and so forth. Now if you talk about the first unit as Sunita in space, it is the complete life in space. And we are on the earth. How the child will imagine how a person who has landed in the space is going to brush the teeth, how he is going to comb the hair, how he will eat, how he will sleep, how he will sleep on. This is con completely abstract for the child. When the video is projected, the concept becomes more easier for the child to understand. Here we have to appreciate the effective pedagogy of ICT usage. Now coming to the next one, home and abroad. It is a, a lesson which talks about a person uh, living in India and in a foreign country. Some of the children would not have even moved out of their own city or a village. How the child is going to imagine about a life in a foreign country? So the friend of mine who had daughter in a foreign country, she completely videographed the life of a person who is there, the transport, the roads, the malls, their flats, everything that was shared and explained in the classroom where the, the ICT became a handy tool for us to explain the concept of home and abroad very well. When you talk about the third one, the value of plants, plants, the children would have seen only a limited numbers. When it is brought into life through the videos inside the classroom, 
the effective understanding and transaction takes place. Fourth one is the up you go. It is talking about the adventure, mountaineering. What kind of tools they use, how they get trained, how they climb up on a steep mountain, and what kind of precautions they are taking. These are the things when you talk orally, it may not reach them out. But when it is explained through the animated videos, the concept is well taken by the children. Then the Nandita in Mumbai, a child who is going, moving from village to the Mumbai city, where she is astonished to look at this multi-story building, the lift and other things. So these were brought in the form of a video, though picture is there, but the video uh, takes them into the imaginary world of them being there in the particular place. So what made them understand it better and they got excited when they see all these things. When the earth shook, it is all about the Buj earthquake, which I have taken as my project for an ICT award, which I will explain in the coming slides. And also, uh, in class one and two, we talk about the animal world, plant world, everything. But the place where the children are there in the school, you cannot take them immediately to the zoo. So the best option would be online zoo. You connect them in the online zoo, then you see that how they are excited as if they are being into the zoo for a visit. And also we have used AR and VR. Augmented reality is a wonderful tool, I should say. We brought the elephants, the deer, the peacocks inside their classroom on their table. Ants were moving on their hand and the zebras were walking inside their classroom. So you can imagine the kind of excitement what the children had when we showed using the augmented reality. Now coming to my project, my project was when the earth shook. This is a concept which is there in class 5 EVS textbook talking about the earthquake which happened in the year 2004. Now it was a lesson to create an awareness among the students how they have to behave, how they have to react when there is an earthquake and what will be the aftermath, how they have to get prepared themselves. So how to teach this lesson? I cannot only show the pictures, see the buildings have fallen down, there is no light there full debris, people are under the debris, life is large, this is the medicine, this is the shed, this is the tent. This will not uh, invite their attraction. So what I planned was, divided my class into five groups. My class had 55 strings, so I divided them into five different groups. The group one did the demo of this earthquake in the morning assembly in the private. Level 2, that is my group 2, they were trained to use cameras to take photos and the videos. So whatever was presented in the assembly, these children took the photographs and two or three of them took the videos also. Now my group 3, as I told you, with the help of the computer teacher in the school, they prepared a small quiz. And that was conducted online for primary children using the intranet. Now my fourth group collected the data, that is the marks of the students class-wise. They tabulated the data of the quiz. They did the analysis. Which class children did it better? Which class children could not understand? Was it because they were standing at the back of the line? Because these children were in the front? whether the language was not reachable for the children. So these kind of analysis were done by the group 4 after tabulating the data and they used the bar graph class-wise, section-wise, how far the demo was successful, which was done by them. Now, there was one group left out. Those were very shy. They could not come out for anything. So we gave them a chance option of downloading the pictures of outline of this uh, earthquake 
and that was distributed to all the class 1 children to color it so by coloring they will understand if i am there inside the room where i have to go and stand if i am there inside the uh, vehicle how i have to jump out and then stand in the open ground like that this pictures made them understand the concept of how to react during the earthquake easier so now their job over they did the project as a facilitator i was there with them all these demos pictures videos their quiz their tabulated data the coloring sheet everything was compiled and that was presented in the form of my presentation for ICT award jury meeting i did tell them that this was a complete work done by my students they deserve to get the award they were professor rajaram ji was there he was i think joint director at that time he was very much appreciating the work of the students i think because of my students i got this award it is not the credit for me it is for my children i always used to say this now because of doing this kind of an experiment in the school the students got empowered they started every chapter preparing seminars using self prepared powerpoint presentations and they started interviewing people and they also recorded the interviews and played it in front of other groups for the discussion whenever there is a group work we divide the class into groups each group would be given particular lesson for either the seminar or for preparing the question bank or for preparing an objective type quiz so the children took it as a challenge they prepared the question bank chapter wise through collaboration as i told you with the google doc they became experts in the use of their computers of course we are there at one side their parents being in the campus of iit madras they also supported them to the maximum extent possible i would say some of the times i became the learner from my students and also from my parents of the vidyalaya now coming to the pandemic time that was a big challenge three years back there were plenty of challenges in front of us children are not coming to school we are not going to school sometimes there is no power sometimes you do not know how to use the computer we do not know what kind of resources are available because mostly we are used to chalk and talk method all in a sudden everything is going into a online mode maybe i am experienced with 35 years but i may not be experienced with a computer 35 years so from where i will get my resources who will help me to connect it with the google meet who will help me to share the screen who will help me to post something in the google classroom these were the challenges for the teachers but believe me more than us the children learnt it very fast they became the a teacher for us they became the facilitator for us they will say madam you don't worry we will share you can just brief us that was a kind of learning which happened during the pandemic of course i will tell you up to the second wave everybody struggled we do not know mentally depressed so many things have happened after that we slowly got up and even downloading the e book to share in our google classroom some of them did not know so we used to download it we share it and they will take the class day so that's i can tell you the best collaboration happened during the pandemic we started using extensive use of this nishta diksha portal we underwent so many courses and also e pathshala alternative academic calendar all these in very handy when we did not enter the 
school premises in a physical infrastructure. After that, we had online classes, sharing all happened. Ma'am, okay. here let me tell you that, here let me tell you that we have 10 more minutes left for this session, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I have only two more slides. Okay. Okay. Assessment also happened in online, both adjective and the descriptive along with the oral because only when you post something, what happens is the children will mute themselves, both audio, video, and we do not know from where they are copying the answers and writing in the assessment. So in order to understand how far they have achieved the learning outcome, we also conducted the learning outcome oral tests through the online mode. And also talking about the inspections, we had online inspections by the officers and also the classroom observation by the principals where they gave wonderful suggestions for the improvement of online transaction. Not only this, even the celebrations, we could not go to school, we could not give the training for the children. But during this time, the parents stood like a rock with us. They trained the children. Everything was recorded, including the annual day, grandparents day, national celebration of independence day, republic day. Everything went on as usual to the online mode. Now coming to the knowledge foundation, attending CIET lectures every day, every day, one awardee or the other shared one tool or the other for either the pedagogy or for the assessment or for strengthening the concept inside the classroom through the online mode. It was a big boon for all of us. Not only CIET, even the CBSC, NCERT, our own organization, everybody conducted online workshops and seminars to update our knowledge without any problem. Now, it was a big boon. Hats off to CIET, NCRT for initiating the program. Maybe I think I will be the last person today to present my journey as an NCT, uh, ICT awardee here. I do not know whether anybody is left out or not. Uh, thanks to Angel Man, without leaving, she was asking me every day, Madam, when would you like to go? And I said, Madam, I have retired. She said, now you have more time for you. You can do it wonderfully well. We are expecting you on the board. Thanks to Angel Ma'am also uh, for this wonderful initiative. So the pandemic did not stop the learning process, I assure you. And it made the teachers more effective in the usage of day-to-day -day ICT, I tell you. So the improvement happened because of the pandemic. In one way or the other, I would say, uh, thanks to pandemic. Otherwise, we would have moved only to the old method of teaching chalk and talk and showing the chart and other things. So because of this, we have learned so many things by sitting at room and also we have shared and collaborated with people all around us. So now, this initiative has trickled in the mind of the children. Now, if I show one thing today, the children will come with something else tomorrow. They will say, ma'am, I found this. This can be done like this. So they became the teacher and all of us became uh, the learners in front of the child. So it was a very, very healthy competition. We have used Kahoot, we have used Quizlet, Survey Monkey, Nearpod, Profile, so many things which uh, we learned during the pandemic. But one thing, I am not well versed in computer, but the usage of computer, whether it is right or wrong, whether cyber safety is there, security is there, that aspect uh, we need to, I need to explore more. Otherwise, everything went on as usual, even when the schools were not open. So, uh, this is my basic and uh, very strong learning, I should say, in the field of my uh, teacher experience. What I have learned all these days, it is only very little. My learning will continue. So first, I have to thank my family for understanding my passion and allowing me to work extra hours in uh, learning new things, exploring new things. I should also extend my sincere thanks to my friends and mentors who collaborated with me, made me very comfortable in my stay during all these 40 years 
and made me learn along with them. And thanks to KVS for uh, ever motivating guests here. That is, they will always support the teacher to learn more and more and come out with the flying colors. Sincere thanks to CBSC for all kinds of updation and also to MHRD and MOE for uh, encouraging the teachers with the national level awards of national uh, teachers award as well as national ICT award. So once again, my sincere and heartfelt thanks to CIET for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much, ma'am, for sharing your journey with us. And it's truly, truly inspirational here as we have still some time. So we would like to know about the award in which year you have received this award and what changes you have observed, observed after that, ma'am. Uh, my national award for teacher was in the year 2007. And my national a level innovation and experimentation award was in the year 2010. Hmm. When I went there to Delhi to receive the award from the minister, I came to know about the national ICT award. Hmm. Then I asked them, what is this award? How are we to train the students? Whether it is to be done by the teacher or the student or it is collaboration, what kind of it? So I got complete uh, support and the guidance when I attended this award function day. So I started working on it. Definitely I would say that is the point where I started learning more usage of computers. Okay. So ma'am, indeed it wasn't easy for you to start your journey when you started using ICT in your teaching learning process, right? What was your inspiration and motivation ma'am? Basically I tell you I have been brought up only in a village. I have not got even the exposure to the English language also. Mm -hmm. So what I did not get, I wanted my children to get. So whatever is possible, I wanted to give them in their classroom. So I tried my level best to give all that what I could not get for them. That was the main motivation for me. Okay. So ma'am, as you are retired now with the vast and proud experience of uh, teaching, so what are your future plans ma'am? What would you like to do in the field of education now? Is there any future plan for you ma'am? Uh, I am already uh, taken up two three jobs madam. I am doing uh, educational advisor for two three institutions. Hmm. I am also translating certain books from the other languages to Tamil. Hmm. I also am conducting the workshops and seminars for the primary teachers where they really need the support in the usage of ICT. That's great ma'am. Any message that you want to convey to all the teacher or teacher, uh, teacher educator out there? My sincere uh, request to all the teachers, being in this profession, you have to be more passionate, hmm. not to something else. And keep always comparing yourself to yourself. Hmm. And try to improve your standard because the days are changing, the culture is changing, the education system is changing. So unless we change ourselves, I think we will become an outdated teacher. And more than anything, do not expect somebody to motivate you. Hmm. You have to be a self-motivated person with a hard-working tendency and to have a focused uh, mind that I have to do this somehow I will learn, I will try to achieve this. So that should be the attitude of a teacher. That will definitely help the children to gain more knowledge and you also will be a lifelong learner, I tell you, because the present generation is like that. They learn things faster than us. Hmm. So one day or the other, we become a learner, they become the teacher in the class. So teacher is a lifelong learner, we shouldn't forget that. Exactly, very rightly said, ma'am. And it was a pleasure listening to you. All the very best for your future, ma'am. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, ma'am. And thank you so very much to all the viewers out there. And before I wrap up this session, uh, let me share some uh, certain information to all the viewers about NCERT textbooks. NCERT textbooks for the year 2023-24 are available throughout the country and these textbooks may be purchased directly from NCERT sales counters located at New Delhi, Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Kolkata and Guwahati. 
These sales counters will be functional on all the weekdays including all the gadgeted holidays, Saturdays and Sundays as well from 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. These you may also place order for the books online from our website that is ncert.ncert.gov.in and these books will be delivered at your doorsteps with no delivery fees. And in case if you want a soft copy of all those books in PDF version, it can also be downloaded online for free from NCERT, Diksha e Pachala website and from our mobile app as well. We would request you to visit our website that is ncert.nic.in to know more about the authorized vendors. With that note, me Renu Bhatt is taking your leave but you stay tuned to eVidya channels and NCERT official YouTube channel for more informative program. Our next session is Sahyog where we try to provide psychosocial support to all these students and we talk about their mental well-being as well and the topic would be 21st century learning skills for students. Me Renu Bhatt is taking your leave. Namaskar.